taking a swig and sitting atop this 25-pound outrigger canoe made of ultralight carbon fiber graphite is 39-year-old house mom Margot Pellegrino, who's about to make an incredible journey. I'm going to paddle from this outrigger canoe from Miami to Camden, Maine. You heard right, from Miami to Maine, paddling solo, 2,000 miles in all. Oh, yeah. And in case you're wondering why she's leaving her husband and two young children for nearly three months, she says she's got a very important message to get out. It's to bring some awareness to the concerns of the ocean right now. I mean, the things that are are really pushing the ocean to the brink. Pellegrino says her 2,000-mile solo paddle effort is the best way to call attention to endangered reefs, overfishing, and pollution in the oceans. We have Margot Pellegrino paddling in where the mountains meet the sea in Camden, Maine. All right. (laughs) <laughs> Victory shot. <laughs> this is WABI TV5 News at 6. Well, still ahead on TV5 News tonight, a woman completes an incredible canoe trip that brought her from Miami all the way to Maine. We'll tell you why she did it. Margot Pellegrino has just finished a 2,000-mile paddle from the Miami Beach Club in Florida to Camden Harbor. Pellegrino has been traveling up the coastline since May 8th, raising awareness of the issues of the ocean along the way. Has it all been worthwhile? Yes, I think it's been worth it. I think it's been worth it. Although, you know what, this trip is really just the beginning. While her final land in Camden, Maine marked the end of her journey, it was really just the beginning. Her paddle up the eastern seaboard was just her way to create a platform to spread a message. A year later, she reincarnated the mission with a more direct call for action. A New Jersey woman is making her second canoe voyage to call out to congressmen to help save our seas. Medford Lakes resident Margot Pellegrino began her 500-mile message in a bottle paddle in her outrigger canoe today at the Little Leg Harbor Yacht Club in Long Beach Island. She will be paddling through districts of congressmen who are considering a comprehensive Healthy Oceans Act. Along her way, she will collect messages urging the congressman to protect our oceans for the future. The bottles tied up in a net bag are strapped to Margot Pellegrino's slim yellow outrigger canoe as she paddles for Washington. And they carry a simple message, she says. SOS is basically a help on the water or anywhere, you know, sending out an SOS. And we're sending out our SOS Save Our Seas because they need to be saved. Pellegrino and her sponsors, the National Resources Defense Council, are among environmental groups backing a measure called Oceans 21, which establishes a comprehensive federal policy for conserving and managing ocean resources. The legislation stems from recent studies by the U.S. Commission on Ocean Policy and the Pew Commission, a nonprofit. Pellegrino paddled from Miami to Maine last year to promote ocean stewardship, four times the distance of her 500-mile trip from New Jersey to Washington. This year, she took the Delaware and Raritan Canal, known as the DNR, from Long Beach Island on the Jersey Shore to Trenton. And down the Delaware and the C&D Canal, and then on Sunday I paddled from Chesapeake City to here, to Baltimore. Margo's been collecting bottles during her journey, and she hopes to send a message to Congress. That our oceans are on the brink of disaster, so the time is now. We can't wait. Pellegrino started with bottles from advocates in South Jersey and picked up more along the way. They're from whomever will give me a message wherever I go. (laughs) She says she'll deliver the bottles directly to Congress before the summer is out. When she got to Capitol Hill again, Congressman Farr was very appreciative of her efforts to help advance his Healthy Oceans legislation. And so, Margo, I want to just congratulate you as being one of the most effective lobbyists I've seen in a long time because you're just one, you're at a paddle on this coast and now in your second year of it. And just plain speak has really been effective. You've got more press, uh, rightfully so. And I, I, I hope you serve as a model to a lot of people that one person can make a difference. Because you last thing I'd like to say what Margo did is that along the way she's been very thoroughly finding out who the elected officials are, who the members of Congress, and telling them that she's coming to their community and she'd like to have a press conference. People want to do the right thing, but they can't act unless they're aware there's a crisis. What she's doing is reaching a lot of people and creating momentum.
And when you consider that half the U.S. population lives or works in coastal communities, the whole thing doesn't seem that crazy after all. In fact, hitting the local media markets along the whole eastern seaboard to spread the message might just be downright sensible. And as for the coastal communities along the rest of our nation, the distance between them is getting smaller and smaller to her. She hit the Gulf Coast a year later, her third expedition in three years. Once again, the kids and I would head down to visit her. Here's a story that fits right into the fact that Mother's Day is this Sunday. A mom greets her two kids after a long trip. Hey! Who is it? It's those little funny children! The splash you heard, by the way, was Mom's paddle, because Mom, in this case, is ocean paddler Margot Pellegrino. She's kayaking from Fort Pierce, Florida, to New Orleans, Louisiana, a distance of about 1,200 miles. So I'm at the, uh, I don't know, I guess I've got a couple hundred more. I, I probably have about 400 more to go, yeah, so I'm more than halfway. Even if you're in great shape, though, winds and currents can work against you, especially if you're paddling miles offshore in the Atlantic or Gulf. You know, what we need to do with the ocean on, the, on, the, on a grand scale is kind of a, analogous to that. You know, if you don't keep moving forward, you just don't move. And very often you blow backwards. Because that's why Pellegrino is kayaking such an incredible distance, to call attention to the need for healthy oceans. Conservation organizations like the Natural Resources Defense Council are backing her trek. You know, I, I might be the lonely paddler paddling the miles, but I really do look at this just because of the nature of the boat, the nature of the mission. This is a group effort. It would not be possible without all the people that were behind this and without NRDC and Gulf Restoration Network. Dr. Felicia Coleman knows something about healthy oceans. She's the director of Florida State University's Marine Lab. She bristles at those who might call Pellegrino's paddlethon little more than a stunt. First of all, let me just ding scientists, of which I am one. <laughs> Sometimes we just can't speak the lingo. And when you have a woman, uh, you know, she's a mother of two, she thinks it's so important to go out and spread this word because she has such deep concern for her children and their welfare in the future. Uh, I think people can connect with her in just a profound way. I think it's incredibly important. I don't see it as a stunt at all. Not just to attract public attention. This is absolutely a grassroots mechanism. This is bring it up from the bottom because the top ain't raining it down. Uh, so uh, it, it's really important what she's doing. And hopefully for those folks to put a bit of pressure on policymakers. Legislators need to know whether it's at the federal level or the state level or your local level, they count the letters. They count the stacks. How high is my stack for ocean health? But all that can wait for a few days. Pellegrino will be spending Mother's Day weekend on land with her kids Billy and Julia and husband Carl. After that, she'll resume the long and lonely paddle from St. Mark's to the Big Easy. A New Jersey woman is paddling her way along the coast in hopes of raising awareness. The ocean and our gulf and our coastal areas are in such a state right now that unless we do something now, um, we need you know, strong legislation, we need something. Um, we need to reach out to people so that they know what they can do on an individual basis. She began her journey in mid-April. It started in Miami and after 1,200 miles, it will soon end in New Orleans. While the journey hasn't been easy, Pellegrino is gaining national attention for her commitment to conservation. Aaron Viles with the Gulf Restoration Network is tracking Pellegrino's journey, and he's hoping more people will follow her lead. And it's just doing it because she's really passionate about these issues and passionate about raising awareness uh, and wants people to get active. And, you, know, you don't have to be as active as she is, I don't think. You don't have to pick up a paddle, but you should definitely pick up a pen, you know, write your congressman, write your local elected officials, ask them to be more responsible when it comes to our natural resources. And Ms. Pellegrino is spending tonight in Biloxi. She's making two more stops before finishing the journey in New Orleans, Saturday morning, weather permitting. And then she did. The findings of the Ocean Commission were stark. And even more concerning is the consequence of inaction. So she charted her course. Why merely just think about changing the world when you can take action to influence its destiny? And quite possibly demonstrate how one person can make a difference for not only our children, but for all our children, as they are the future leaders of our world.